A new wallet has landed on my desk. It's from the team from DC Spark, so let's check it out. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get- hey everyone, I'm Peter Beery. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Or if this is your first time here, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell really helps with the YouTube algorithms. Now, why do we need so many wallets in the Cardano ecosystem? We have Daedalus, we have Uroi, we have Nami, CC Vault, Card Wallet, Jero Wallet, and there are probably many more that I don't even know about or haven't even looked at yet. This is why this one is special. The team from DC Spark have been working on a lot of really cool tech at the moment, and one of them is called Milkometer. Milkometer is an EVM sidechain. A sidechain that will allow you to run Ethereum based apps or Solidity based apps. So what does that mean? It means that anyone from Ethereum can port their apps over to Cardano on that EVM sidechain on Mucometer, run their apps there, power it via Cardano and pay really low transaction fees. So they can port their entire projects over to Cardano that way. Crazy. Hey, okay. And this Flint wallet is a bridging wallet that will connect either of them to all together. So they've decided to make this wallet so it would work with their side chain, obviously, but as a side result, it would also work with any other EVM chains, such as Solana, such as Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. So it's kind of a big deal to have a big encompassing wallet that will work across multiple different chains and Cardano itself. So let's have a look at it and see what we've got to work with here. So this is the post that came out uh, last week, came out on the 28th, and we can see that the team have put out the wallet on the Google Chrome store as well. So I'll just click on that and we'll have a look at what we got here. So I've already had this one installed. I've got it installed in my browser, so you can go ahead and install this one and get it up and running for yourself as well. So I'm gonna open up the wallet now and we're gonna have a little play around with it and see what we've got to play with. So I've loaded up the extension and this is what you see here. So I am going to create a testnet wallet. That way I can actually see this wallet interact with a dApp. So I've got one that is connected with the particular wallet here with the Flint wallet. And I'm gonna see exactly how it works as a Web3 wallet connecting to a decentralized application. And I'll see what I can do in terms of uh, doing some, some uh, NFTs or something. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So I'll click on testnet. Yep, sure, I can confirm that. And I will create a brand new testnet wallet. So that's my testnet seed phrase there. That's a 15 word one, so I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna edit all this out. So now I've got that, it's making me create a sending, assigning transaction password, create my wallet. It's doing its processing. And now I love this little feature here. This is an extra feature that a lot of other wallets don't have, and this is a locking password. So you can unlock and lock the wallet itself uh, so that no one else can actually see what's in your wallet. So I'm gonna click next and set up a locking password for this. So it's just a four, four uh, digit passcode. So I'll click confirm and great, there we go. So that's the wallet created. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. And I really do like that, uh, that smooth, easy process. So now I've got that done, I'll click on finish. So now I have my Flint wallet set up. I'm going to need to actually set it up and put some assets into it so then I can actually do something. So I can play around with this Muesli site, Muesli Swap website as well. So I'm going to go to my, to open that one up and grab a receiving address. Oh, so probably should talk about the wallet itself. So we've got some, I don't know what this is here, but it looks like holdings, percentage graph holdings on the, on the wallet. We don't have any test ADA, obviously. Uh, looks like we have somewhere to look at our NFTs, which is great. Transaction history and settings overall. So we do have a couple of things that we can change in, over in here, which looks pretty all standard to me, really. So let's go back to the main page and click on a receiving address. And let me copy that receiving address. So I'll go over to NAMI now. So now I have an address to send to. I'll make sure my NAMI wallet is set to uh, the testnet itself. So I can see that I've got test ADA available here. So now I've got a receiving address I'm going to send. Type in the sending address there. I'm gonna send it a thousand ADA to fund that. And I'm gonna add some assets to this as well. So I'm gonna send over 
Let's send over some test min, I guess. And I'll send over a thousand of that. Great. Uh, let's send in one more asset. I want to see what these space buds look like in the actual wallet. So I'll send over that space bud. Great. So click send. Great. So that's now sending over to the testnet uh, wallet on Flint. And because the testnet isn't congested, that should be fairly fast. So I'll jump over to transaction history and see if that's gone out. Great. That looks good there. There we go. That was, uh, yeah, it's fast. I wish everything was this fast. So I can see um, my min test min tokens and my space buds. So let's have a look at my, oh yeah, great. That's my space bud. That looks pretty cool to me. I like it. Now I have the Music Swap website here. Now I do know that the team have integrated in the Flint wallet to the testnet version. That's how I could actually do this video tutorial. If I had nothing to connect to, what was the point? So let's connect in the Flint wallet and see what the experience is like and try and do an order on Muesli Swap. So I'll click on connect with Flint and it loads up my Flint wallet in its password protected mode. So I'll just enter in my pin. Great, I remembered my pin. Now I can connect to this website and select which wallet I have. So this is similar to what CC Vault has where you need to define which wallet in your wallet app you want to connect to. So I'm going to select my wallet one of account one. So it sounds like it's got accounts, like multiple accounts like NAMI. Uh, so I'll go continue. Great, and I can see my uh, wallet get pulled in here and I can see the balance of ADA, which I put in there as well a little bit earlier. So now let's enter the app here and give it a go. So the only uh, token that I can play around with is with the milk token. So I'll scroll down and let's buy some milk. So let's double check what's in my wallet. So you can see that I don't have any milk tokens yet. Great, I have min and I have a space bud. So let's go buy, buy this, uh, how many did I buy? 20 ADA worth. No, uh, 20 per token, sorry. 100 ADA worth. So I'm buying five milk tokens. Let's submit that transaction. Everything in here looks good. Place the order. Uh, what was my password? Great, transaction signed. I actually remember my password. Let's go continue. Cool, okay. Uh, order's been placed. Please uh, wait with placing any new orders. Transaction appears in your wallet. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I understand. I know what's going on here. So let's click on the Flint wallet and check the transaction history to make sure that's gone out. Ooh, hasn't yet. And there it goes. So I can see my 100 ADA go out plus the little bit of extra in terms of fees. So I should see my milk tokens come back at me any moment now. So I've waited for a bit and it doesn't look like my order is coming through from Muesli Swap, but you know, that's okay. At least we've seen exactly how it would interact. So it might be a bug on their system in regards to the smart contract sending something back. So uh, it, that might be the case there. I don't know exactly. So the issue might be with with Music Swap on their testnet. I have contacted them before about their testnet with some other bugs. And they said, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. So that might be the reason why I haven't received my assets yet. We'll see. But let's have a look at some of these other settings within the Flint wallet as well to see what else we're playing with. So we've got the display, we've got language settings, so only English at the moment, and we can change to USD, Japanese Yen and Euro. Okay, so no Australian dollar yet, I see. We've got help and support. Ah, right, so we can get the logs, so we can actually send log files over to the support team. That's great. Uh, about Flint. So we've got some version versioning here so we can know what version we're using. Legal info, blah, blah, blah. Does anyone ever read this? Let's go back. Analytics, okay. Oh, we can opt out of whatever they're collecting. Yeah, they can have my data. If it improves the wallet, you can have it for a bit. If I'm paranoid, I'll turn it off. Uh, connecting to blockchain explorers. Okay, cool, so I can choose which one I prefer. I do prefer a Cardano scan, I just like it. And then my NFT Explorer. 
I don't have a choice. They're making me use NFT Explorer, all right. Dino scan, yes, that's what I want. Cool. So what else do I have here? Servers. So server settings here, I can see which servers I want to connect to. So they're all connecting to the DC Spark servers. So it doesn't look like I have an option to connect to my own, uh, which I'm hoping they will do one day. And then further down here, I've got the passcode, which um, I can change. One thing that really annoys me here in the UX is I'm down here, I'm clicking back and it takes me back to the top of the setting screen, which I find really, really annoying. Anyway, uh, so passcode, I can change my password. Resync my wallet if I'm having any issues. Yeah, let's not do that now. Okay, it seems pretty straightforward. Really straightforward wallet. I can't see any um, any integrations in with the EVM side chains yet. Um, maybe I actually have to connect this wallet to Solana, for example. I'll be able to send assets to it. I'm not entirely sure yet, but so far so good. Now here, delegation. I have not delegated yet. This is a, a, a test wallet here. So I can't see from here how I can delegate from this. So I'm assuming it's working in a very similar way to how NAMI works. You need to go to a website, interact with that particular website to uh, delegate to. Uh, so now in the future, instead of just going to Pool Peak, for example, instead of just clicking join, this, this one here would trigger the interaction with NAMI wallet. So I guess uh, web developers would also have to trigger the interactions with um, Flint wallet and whatever else, uh, whatever other Web3 wallet there is. So this one um, isn't connecting with CC Vault, for example. Maybe they can set up a CC Vault delegation button as well, a Flint wallet delegation button. So it seems like a lot of extra work for website developers in general to connect and integrate all these different wallets. So maybe one day one of one or two of these wallets become dominant in the industry and we'll see exactly uh, which ones we need to integrate into so it's a it's a lot of work at the moment that we will have to do but anyway so far so good i do like what i see with the wallet um, it seems pretty straightforward very similar to nami wallet and a mixture of maybe your it's probably influences there from both wallets and probably influence from their experience as well because i know members of the dc spark team have worked on the Euroi wallet in the past when they used to work at Emergo. So that wouldn't surprise me at all, but so far so good. Flint wallet is looking quite interesting to play around with. I'm really interested to see what is in store in regards to its EVM capabilities and cross chain and side chain capabilities as well. So that's coming up. Make sure you keep an eye out for Flint wallet and what they're developing in the future. It's going to be one of those wallets that you will need to be playing around with. I highly suspect because of that side chain and that cross chain capabilities as well. Okay. That's it for me for this episode. Please give that thumbs up, click subscribe, click the notification bell. If you love this kind of content, it's all around Cardano. I'll catch you in the next video. Yeah, yeah, gotta do it like that. You've been listening to the Learn Cardano podcast. Gotta get it hype. Crypto is what we like. But this is not investment or financial advice. Gotta do your research, cause it's risky. We know it is. This show is educational and it's informative. Crypto's the future, really, it ain't no debate.